This is Gary DeGrazia again. And the video we're going to talk about today and share with you is the five levels of income that I earned from probate real estate, which I've been doing for the last 25 years. Now remember, I make 80% of my income from buying and selling probate real estate. And I want to share this information with you today so you can start getting this into your own production. So what I want to talk about first is why should real estate agents and investors want to work probate real estate, okay? First of all, you want to work where the business is. Now, keep in mind that I track every probate that comes out of Alameda County, where I work and live, Contra Costa County, San Francisco County, San Mateo, and Santa Clara County, all the Bay Area in Northern California. And every month, just in Alameda County alone, I track between 60 to 80 probate estates that have just been opened, and there's real estate inside that estate. And we're going to contact those heirs and see if they want to sell that property or whatever they want to do. So in your own business right now, do you have 60 to 80 leads a month that with real estate that you could go to and pitch for a sale for your buyers or for a listing? And I'm telling you, no, you don't. That's probably why you're here. Well, this is how we operate. And my team is in every county. So I have a key agent in each county working these properties that we come up. So you can imagine how many leads we have every month. Now, are all of these going to sell? No, they're not. But what I'm going to show you is how we're going to get future business and now business. The now business being those that want to do something with the real estate today, and maybe they want us to come in and cash them out, or they want to list the property to expose to the MLS, or whatever the reason is, that's now business. And for future business, I'm going to show you how we farm probate real estates. So, in an average of seven months, these properties revert to the heirs, and now they own a piece of property that's free and clear, and that's where the itch is going to come, and let's do something with this property. So, working where the business is, is very smart, because if you're like 90% of the real estate agents out here, in our hot market, most of you are scrambling right now. You don't even want to take a buyer out because you have multiple offers and you have uh, over asking prices. And it's very difficult right now to earn a living unless you're a listing agent. And inventory is down. So there's just not enough listings to go around. So work where the business is. Another key factor is work where others aren't. The competition is not working probate real estate. Now they come and go. Right now we have more activity in the probate real estate world than than we've had in a number of years, and that's because TS sales, REOs, short sales, they're all down right now. So these people are trying to keep their production up, these real estate agents, and they're looking for other means, so they're coming into the probate arena. But I'm telling you right now, this is a very special niche. It's very easy to find the probate files at the courthouse now. You just need some direction of where to go. But what is and separates the men from the boys that does this business successfully and adds six figures to your business is what do you do once you make a contact? So what I want to talk about is the five levels of how I earn with probate real estate right now and how I've been doing this for over 25 years and how you can add this. So the first level is where I represent right now in our investors where we're going to come into the estate and we're going to cash out the estate on the property. They don't care about high retail. They just want the money. They want the property off of their plate. They have so much they're doing right now. If you've ever been involved in a probate, there is so much red tape and requirements for a petitioner executor to do that a lot of times they don't want to have to deal with a piece of real estate that's vacant. Maybe they're out of state and they're worried about a vacant property. So when we're contacting them, say, yeah, bring me an offer. And if it makes sense to them, this is where we'll buy that property around 70 cents on a dollar. And this is a property that we're going to rehab if we need to and resell it. I do this with investors. Now through the 90s, this is all I did. I didn't even do general real estate. I didn't care about taking listings on probates or farming probates for future business. It was just buying and selling. I wanted my time back. I was raising my kids. They were in the teen years. I wanted to spend my time with them traveling with sports and just having a great time, but I wanted to keep my income up. So what I did was I found probate real estate, and I earned three times per deal that I would in a regular transaction, so that meant I was able to reduce my time by two-thirds and still earn the same amount of money, okay? So all through the 90s, I just bought and sold flipping. That's level one. 
I'm going to teach you how to do this. Uh, it could be your own money. It could be with other investors. I represent investors that will buy and sell, but only a certain type of investor. We also uh, will represent landlords that want to buy a rental property. Many of them out there right now. And while we're doing this, we're, if we're flipping and we're a principal in a deal, we're making large profits, twenty-five dollars to $50,000 per home. If we're uh, representing an investor to buy the property, we're earning our full 6% commission. When's the last time that you earned a full 6%? Most of you are working on two to do an app today, if you're lucky to find a deal, okay? So, now level two, this is what we call, uh, it could be an assignment, a wholesale deal for our investors that are my students. You're going to tie up that property that we could not buy at 70 cents on a dollar, but we're going to take that property and wholesale it out to our email list of other investors that want to buy properties. They want to buy the whole properties. You may have a network of agents that I teach you how to establish and you can take that property to a network agent. And what you're going to do is sell that property because you're an investor and you're going to collect a wholesale fee based on the equity that's passing through. Now in my case, because I'm an agent, I double end sales at this level two earning uh, with probates. And what I mean by that is I couldn't buy that $100,000 house at $70,000 with my investor group but I could buy it at 80 to 85 cents. So what I would do then is market that property to investors that are landlord types or to my own buyers that we recruit. And would you agree with me in 2013 today in this hot real estate market with, with multiple offers and over asking uh, sale prices on everything, that if you brought a property to somebody at 85 cents, even 100% of retail, would you not be able to find a buyer pretty easy for it? Of course you would, because people are paying way over that 100000 to get that property. And remember, we're dealing under the MLS. We're not on the MLS with this. We market for our buyers, and we market for our state sellers. So what I do is I double end these sales. I bring them in, we get a full 6%. And we'll show you how we do this. In some cases, it's a net offer to the estate, and it's a great place to deal with. They love us when we bring this program to them. Now, I don't start with the double end. We start with the level one. We're trying to buy it first for investors. And then we'll work it to level two. And we'll double end. Now, with those double end sales, you could do one of these a month if you're a good real estate agent. Since January 1st of this year, we've done 18 probate sides on my team. And most of them have been double end. Most of them off the MLS radar. Okay? Now, this leads us to level three. Another area that we earn is... We couldn't buy the probate at wholesale price at level one. We didn't have a buyer for it at level two. And keep it in mind on level two, we will have a network of agents that we deal with. And if we can't sell this ourselves, we'll contact that network agent who happens to be and works in that area where this particular probate is, and we'll ask him or her, do you have a buyer for this property? Let's put a deal together. And most times, that's all I have to do is pick up the phone, we put the deal together, and we split to 6%. Great, great way to work, okay? So now, all I have to do is pick up a pro uh, phone and call a network agent. They're calling me all the time in this market looking for certain properties. I have a shopping list of what properties they want. And if we can't sell them ourselves, we call them up. We don't have to take it to the MLS. Okay, now a lot of times these properties, we won't have a sale within our own buyer uh, market, our own buyer club, what we like to call it. Our network agent may not have a buyer for it, so what do we do? Well, because we've established ourselves as a probate professional with the estate, and I show my students how to do this, how to create a relationship, that who's in better position to get that listing when it comes time to talk about that? You'll have estate attorneys that have their uh, real estate agents that they want to use. Some of the family members will have real estate friends that they do. But the way we position ourselves is the estate the state decides they don't want to use anybody else than the probate professional, which we are. And we'll get our regular commissions out of that, okay? Now keep in mind, on all our sales, we stay out of court. There's no 90% rule for appraisals. There's no 10% deposits up front. We treat it like a regular sale, and we close in 45 days or less. Because we're using a, a law that was enacted in 1987 that most people never heard of before 2000, okay? So that's level three. That's where the listings will come. And if you're a good agent, you should be able to take a listing a quarter at the minimum. 
And in my area with a 300,000 average sales price, that's nine grand every quarter, an extra 36,000 to your production. Not too bad, okay? But if you're real good, you should be able to take one a month. Now level four is where we teach our students and our agents and our investors how to find probate properties at the court overbid. In California, we have two ways to probate in the state. One is the court confirmation of sale, and to keep in mind our focus with this probate process is just the real estate, what we're doing with it. So one of the methods is the old school way, is that sale goes to court. And that's where you see the 10% deposits, you're going to wait six to eight weeks to get on the court calendar uh, to confirm the sale. The buyer is going to have to buy as is, there's no contingencies once the sale is confirmed in court. And the last thing is, and why a lot of people stay out of this, if you did buy a probate right, when you go to confirm that sale, other bidders can bid on that property and snatch it away from you. So you as a real estate agent had your client there, did not get your commission, and you as the investor had your money tied up for six to eight weeks, did not get the property. No wonder more, most people stay away from probates, but that's the old law. We work under the new law, the IAEA, and if you don't know what that means, you should because that can make you six figures every year. And that's what we teach our students, okay? So at the court overbid, we show you how certain properties will slip through. There has to be these red flags that pop up for us to look at that property. And when things are slow, in my level ones and level twos and threes, we'll work level four to go pick up some deals. And we've bought some level ones there. We sold a lot of level twos where we represented a buyer and, and bought that property in court. So you could add another deal a quarter work of that for you. All right, level five is what we're really excited about. This is how I teach real estate agents and investors how to farm probate real estate. All you agents out there, you understand. All you investors out there, you understand what farming is. I did it when I first started 40 years ago. And I had a farm of five, 600 homes. And I established myself by branding myself, my name, my picture, my company. And I was in hopes to get 20 to 25% of that business that came out of there every year. Farming is a great tool. But think about this. Imagine farming 500 homes that are free and clear and that heirs own after a probate process. They're sitting on this money. They've had seven months of headaches. Now they have their family member in the house. They thought that this is what they wanted to do or they wanted to rent it out to the general public at large. And now they have all those headaches from renting out and you've been branding them for seven months as a pro agent. Who do you think has a good chance of getting that listing? Well, we're going to teach you how to add 500 homes a year, free and clear probate homes to your farm. And that should excite you. If nothing else, that should excite you because now you're going to pick up business there every year. You're done with the probate. You don't have to deal anything there. So that's my five levels of where I live where I earn 80% of my money, it's provided six figures every year for my production, and that we're sharing with agents and investors who want to take the time to learn something a little bit different. So I thank you for this segment. You've been receiving our information, our tips on probate, my blogs on probate because you opt in, and one of our, you know, one of our probate agents or investors of the future that want to maybe someday network with us. Thank you for, for spending the time to help increase your real estate business.